Hey guys, Drew here, and I just watched the first two episodes of Foundation on Apple TV+. And I'm having a lot of trouble forming my thoughts on this one. It's a weird show because I feel like I could give it a positive review or I could give it a negative review depending on the mood I was in. I think that for the first 30 minutes or so, I was really, really not enjoying the show. I was just finding it terrible. I was like, this is really, really slow. It is doing way too much world building when it hasn't set up the stakes of the story yet. And while the visuals are just phenomenal, I just wasn't really feeling drawn into the story in any significant way. It felt very, very like a experience that I was kind of participating in from a distance, but not really like emotionally caught up in. And then in the back half, the episode got a lot better and I ended up feeling fairly positively about the first episode. And then the second episode, I again felt kind of the meandering aspects of the first episode that I hadn't been so keen on, but then it wrapped up in a spectacular fashion that got my attention again. So I'm noticing a pattern with this show. Um, I definitely see what the pitch is here. When David Goyer pitched it to Apple TV+, Plus, he described it as a chess match between the character of Harry Seldon, played here by Jared Harris, and the Empire going on for hundreds of years and Everyone that is another character in this story is just a pawn in the game between these two, and some of the pawns become kings and queens. Uh, so obviously, I think any time a show like this with just a massive, massive budget that is a genre show, this one very, very much sci-fi, gets greenlit these days, I think that there's definitely this attempt to ape the success of Game of Thrones. And just from that description, I feel like you can see what the pitch was, that it is like this battle uh, for the soul of the universe in a sense. And I think that to his credit, David Goyer, I feel like he has he's always been kind of a mixed bag as a writer. He's never been more successful than when he collaborated with Christopher Nolan. Uh, but when you watch this show, I immediately was thinking about the fact that he had had involvement with both Man of Steel and Krypton. And there's a lot of elements of those shows in this show, whether it be the look of the Emperor, uh, which an I'll talk more about the Emperor in a second, but the look of him is very, very much, it reminded me of the Kryptonians. It's this very godlike, ridiculous costume that is still very imposing, but it feels like a costume. And I do think it sort of fits with what Asimov was going for in the books because it kind of evokes the Roman Empire emperors in a way. And in a sense, I think that foundation has always been about the fall of the Roman Empire. So in that sense, I like the costume, uh, but it constantly reminded me of the similarities between this story and the Krypton story where you've got this empire that's incredibly powerful and they're not listening to someone who has predicted the end of this empire, has predicted that it's going to fall and that they need to put their eggs in another basket to mitigate the damage from that. Um, so you've got this conflict between Lee Pace's emperor who there's actually multiple versions of him. He's cloned himself so that he can have a genetic dynasty and there's different aged versions of him. And the minute that I realized that this was the concept, I thought, well, I bet they did this just so that over the course of multiple seasons and hundreds of years, Lee Pace can remain the primary antagonist, that they can have this familiar face. Because if you've read the book, you already knew that Harry Seldon, played by Jared Harris, is going to have a presence throughout the show, even though he doesn't live throughout the entire series. He does have a presence throughout the entire series. So I was like, they're trying to find a way to keep like these characters that don't end as the story moves from century to century, that the characters can sort of still be included. And I kind of like this idea, but thematically, I don't know that it adds a whole lot. But I, I feel that the fact that they're kind of making these two the 
the faces of the opposing forces in this universe. I think it's a clever way to keep the story going. I think there's going to be this temptation to get bent out of shape by the fact that they've changed the races and genders of some characters. I think every time this happens, somebody comes out screaming about how woke a series is. But the thing is, I don't think it really matters at all here because the characters in the book were just there to give speeches about history and economics and science and the nature of the universe and they really did not have much personality at all and they don't hear either <laughs> and that's a big big problem i feel the main character seems to be gail dornick played by lou lovell and i have to admit i did not find her to be a particularly interesting presence uh, she wasn't a bad actress by any means but i think that a large part of it is that the character is so bland and has so little of an identity but I think a large part of it is also just the actress doesn't have a ton of presence that just draws you in to the character. Um, but this is the person you're following. I think that there's a lot more charismatic performances in the show. I think particularly Jared Harris and Lee Pace uh, are really bringing high wattage to their roles. And it's a struggle for me to get invested in the scenes when they're not on screen. There's other characters that get introduced in the first two episodes. We get introduced to Salver Hardin, who is played by Leia Harvey, and she's gonna be another protagonist as the series goes on, another pawn, if you will. I feel that they didn't need to loop this character in this early because there really wasn't anything for them to do with this character in the first two episodes. I think that they were trying to send the message to the viewer that this story isn't really about Gail Dornick. It's gonna go all over the place. It's gonna shift protagonists. Don't get too attached to any one character because this is about the battle for the universe over centuries. It's not about individuals. Um, and that's why where this show has an interesting dilemma because the whole point of Isaac Asimov's novels is that individuals don't matter. Repeatedly throughout the stories, he has moments where you realize that nothing was changed by the actions of the main characters, where if they had done nothing, literally the same things would have transpired. And the problem with this is this is obviously not a great idea for a show. And um, David Goyer, to his credit, has managed to make it feel an awful lot like Asimov's novels. I feel like some people are complaining that it doesn't feel anything like them, but to me, it feels similar enough that I, I can see what he was doing. But he's kind of pulled off this hat trick where I feel like he's basically got a pee and he's spinning a bunch of shells to make you feel like stuff is happening. But when you take a step back and think about it, nothing of consequence is really transpiring because the stuff that's happening for the most part isn't integral to the character's actions. It's not being affected by the characters in a significant way. It's just kind of stuff happening. It's the difference between events and story, if you will. And from that perspective, I feel like there's a lot of mixed reactions to this show. I've seen people saying it's moving too fast. I've seen people say it's moving too slowly. I personally would go in the it's moving too slowly camp because I think that it feels like a lot is happening, but it's mainly irrelevant stuff that's happening. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of modern political messaging going on. You've clearly got these parallels being drawn. There's this big terrorist uh, shocking moment at the end of the first episode and when it happens, they're clearly trying to evoke 9-11, and the response of Lee Pace's brother Day to this is clearly supposed to be an analog to Bush, where he's going after somebody, and it doesn't necessarily matter if it's the country that was directly responsible or if it was individuals from within a country. They're going to go after someone because someone has to be blamed. Uh, and you see parallels being drawn to the modern climate change crisis uh, where you know the characters like Harry Seldon are trying to convince people to act now and people don't want to act and they're basically arguing we can put it off why should we worry about something that's going to affect people 
200 years down the line, but isn't directly going to affect us. Uh, so that you've got that going on. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of things like that that are being pushed into the story, inserted, if you will. And to me, I think it's done effectively, but it doesn't necessarily contribute to the overall themes and plot of Asimov's story. It's kind of just like name dropping of modern issues without really, really bringing them into the overall thematic unison. So I feel that it feels like a lot's happening, but I feel that a lot of the consequences of it don't seem to be that important. I also just feel like the visuals are easily the best thing about this show. I think they must have spent like 200 million on this show. I'm guessing it's at least 20 million an episode. And we live in just a crazy age of television when shows just get more and more expensive and more and more polished. Um, and they aren't necessarily even guaranteed to be successes. There's no guarantee that people are going to tune into this show. So the visuals are fantastic, but I feel like that's almost a flaw because I never felt that anything I was watching on screen had any weight to it because everything was just so visually pristine and alien. I think that, you know, obviously there's the Game of Thrones comparison that I made at the beginning because I feel that they do want to have that appeal. But the thing is, the reason Game of Thrones was successful was because you could recognize the humanity of its characters. And I think that the characters oftentimes seem stranded here. And part of it is because I don't think Asimov created very strong characters in his books. But I think another part is simply that you never really believe in the reality of what you're seeing, so it's hard to believe in the reality of these characters. So there's some really, really interesting stuff, some interesting ideas at play in these episodes. I feel like it's impressive how much as how much of Asimov's text Goyer managed to include because it was described as unfilmable, and I feel like justifiably. And to me, they've he's done an admirable job of including a lot of it while still like basically acknowledging there's no way to adapt it as written because it would be just a bunch of conversations between men in rooms. But my sense is that while the show is going to have great moments, that overall the consistency is going to be very, very... There's not going to be consistency, and it's going to be hard to get pulled in on an episode-by-episode -episode basis. It's going to waffle between being enthralling and being ponderous, and I don't think that it's going to work for a lot of viewers. A lot of people, I think, will find it fascinating just because of the visual splendor of everything on screen and the ideas being presented. But I think a lot of people just look for a little bit more consistency and characters that they can care about. So those are my thoughts on the first two episodes of Foundation for what they are worth. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing my upcoming reviews of Foundation and other shows on this channel, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.